Uh, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I'm a little shocked, actually. I didn't uh, realize that um, the couple people that ended up fifth and fourth and fifth and third and, um, were there. I, I thought that I was third or fourth. I wasn't quite sure where the points ended up. So um, I, I'm, I'm amazed and thrilled and ah, <laughs> so excited. I grew up in Pittsburgh uh, in Pennsylvania and moved to Virginia when I was 17, I think like 10 days out of high school, to uh, start working for Karen and David. So I went to school in there for a little while and came back. So you still train with Karen and yeah. David? Yeah. Okay, so since you were 17. Well, I've actually been riding with Karen since I was tw uh, eight, so it's 20, well, almost 21 years now. And how did that happen? Because she used to come to Pittsburgh for clinics. So, um, well, I was watching when I was a little, little tiny toddler when my mom was riding with her, but then um, I begged and begged and all that. And uh, I think I was eight when I first took my first clinic, and then every year I rode with her, and I begged to come down and be a working student. Um, finally made that happen. So she said, graduate high school, get yourself a car, and then you can come. So that's what I did. Come through like the hunter jumper system? Nope, I was an event rider my whole life, through and through. Okay, and this horse? This horse, um, <laughs> he is a New Zealand thoroughbred. Donna Smith sent him to me from, um, from New Zealand. She called me up one day and said, I just found your next four star horse, and I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> what do you mean? Um, and ends up that, you know, I went shopping in Europe and stuff and hadn't found anything, called her up and said, so what do you, what do you think really? Can I, you know, what's going on with this horse? So she sent me a video and said, come on down and ride him. Well, I couldn't afford the plane ticket to New Zealand plus the horse. So she sent me a video and um, of him jumping and I was so impressed that called her up and I said, can I ride him? Like, honestly, can I ride this horse? You've been with, around me for the last, you know, how many, eight years or so. And uh, she's like, yeah, you can ride him. Like, this is your four-star horse. So we sent him over and uh, it took me a few years <laughs> to figure him out. Um, but he is probably one of the best partners I think I've had. And um, he's amazing. When did you get him? I got him around Christmas of 2008. Okay, so, so he was just while? coming five, yeah. Right. Um, when I yeah. first got him, I couldn't take him away from anybody out of the barn. He was, um, he has a bit of anxiety about being alone, so he would panic. And alone with horses that he knows. He's here by himself this weekend and he's happy as a, you know, pig in poop. But um, if he is with a horse that he knows, then he feels like worried when they leave or when he leaves them. Um, other than that, just the tension, you know, he's a thoroughbred, he raced on the track, so he, um, he struggles a little bit in the ring, more performance anxiety than atmosphere, but um, we've been working on that and it's getting a lot better. So hopefully the scores will start to come down as he starts to settle more and um, he's a lot more broke now than he was before. So I'm really pleased with him. I think he's been great. So um, this weekend I came here just really wanting to get a good qualifying score, have three good phases um, and you know, things to work on for the future, but uh, it was even better than that, so we'll take it. Um, the flat work, I was actually really pleased. He was uh, very up in the warm up, and it was a different horse than I had had. He was very quiet, all the r other rides I'd had previous to that and the days that we had been here. Um, so I, I worked on really trying to get him to, to relax in there. He still carried some tension in the trot work, and then made, um, we both made a couple of small mistakes that I think kept the score a bit higher than I would have liked it to have been um, or than I think that he's capable of right now but you know it's a process and he's young and he's a thoroughbred and he's come a really long way so um, I'm okay with that I think you know there's there's things that I know when I read the test it all makes sense and uh, we can move forward from there and hopefully improve the score the next time as far as cross country goes I would like to keep all my shoes on next time you know what happened? Um, I was trotting over to the box and they had um, pulled the ropes for the horse that one of the horse in front of me that was coming through the bank and um, <laughs> I was less than a minute so I went to trot up the hill and he just hit a low spot and pulled his front one of his front shoes off so I had somebody grab it and hand it to me and he ran up to the box and ah, I lost the shoe um, so they luckily let me um, hop off and put the shoe back on and then re-warm up and then go out and it was a little confusing for the horse for sure because to go up to the box and be pumped and ready to go and then you get off he was um, confused. I think it took him until just about the coffin to really realize that we were 
going cross country and we weren't just sort of schooling. <laughs> um, and then, uh, but I definitely noticed um, heading to fence five uh, that didn't quite have all the tools that I thought I had. And um, I thought it was just how he was dealing with the mud. But turns out when I pulled up and finished, he had lost both hind shoes. So knowing that I felt that on the way to fence five, I have a feeling that coming into that first water, it was very deep. I think both his hind shoes just got sucked right off. And um, he did pretty much the entire three-star track in the mud with no hind shoes. Right, so bare, bare Barefoot. So, and he was six seconds over. So, I mean, I, I definitely feel like at this point, if I would have had shoes, I probably could have gone under the time. You would have been but yeah, I think he would have been, well, I don't know about that, but, um, but he, I mean, he was fantastic. He jumped great. You know, there, there were a couple of places I would have loved to have it been a little bit tidier, but without iron shoes, there's not a whole lot you can do at that speed. So, um, and then today, you know, he was tired, but I, um, and I was a little out of it in the warm up, And I, you know, I said to David before I went in, like, I just need to go forward, right? Like, I just need to go forward. He's like, yeah you need to go more forward. So I came in and um, I felt like it was a little rushed, but in the end for a tired horse over big jumps, it worked out in our favor and um, he was great, he jumped awesome. So I think one of three clear rounds or something like that. So I'll yeah, take it. I mean, I won a, a one star a long time ago. Uh, it was a full format, which was kind of cool, but um, I am actually in shock. I think I'm in shock because realistically, when he pulled that shoe yesterday before I started cross country, I, I didn't think they were gonna let me go. Like I thought I was gonna miss my, my mark. Um, and then today, I mean, I, I got in there and he jumped clear and I was like, oh my gosh, I just jumped clear. And then every, you know, most people were having rails or time faults and I just sort of climbed. I mean, I was eighth going in to the show jumping. So with a clear round, he moved up to second, which was amazing. Um, and you know, Jess won, which is unbelievable because she's one of my best friends, like my sister. So to be second to anybody, I'll take it. <laughs> um, and you know, I'm an American and I got a blue ribbon, which means I won. <laughs> so I'll take it. Yeah. And so, and I, you know, I think with all of us, um, in this sport, it is very humbling. And even without throughout the weekend, you know, it's very humbling. You go highs and lows, whether you've had a good dressage test or made some mistakes or disappointed in a couple of jumps cross country or you had to run out or, you know, whatever. Um, but I think that, I think everybody questions, what are we doing, especially Saturday morning before we go? <laughs> but, you know, when we finish, there's, there's nothing better than having had um, a successful weekend and not just in the placings, but uh, personal success, whatever you felt, you know, th through the three phases you needed to do from the last show, improvement wise, or things like that. So um, it's pretty cool. I what like it. What do you it. love the most about the sport? Like, what's your favorite? I love, besides the actual riding part, which is obviously amazing, um, I love the camaraderie in the barn and the fact that, you know, you could drive all the way up to Canada and forget your tack and somebody would give you their tack so that you can ride. And it's a competition. You know, there's not many sports that would hand over their own stuff, you know, so that you can do well. I think it's a very cool group of people to be around. And um, I don't know, I think it's just, uh, it's a cool sport to be a part of for sure. So I like it. And what's next for you in this horse? Um, hopefully Fair Hill in the fall. Okay. Woo! Love you, Woo! <laughs> You're next, Jess. You're oh, next. She's <laughs> You're my hero. Uh, well, my family owns the horse. Um, I, uh, my mom is always here with me. She comes to every horse show. So huge thanks to my mom. My dad um, helps financially with uh, a lot of my stuff. So as much as I can do on myself, I do. But my parents have always been a great support. And um, my coaches, Karen and David, all my sponsors, everybody that got me to this point, my new help at home, all that kind of stuff. So everybody that has helped in any way <laughs> to get me here, I really, I really appreciate it. And so does the horse, my vets, farriers, all that stuff. So, so good luck for the rest of the way. Thank you.